we are not going to be rendering the buildings, but we will still need them uh, when we are doing our renders so that we can use them as phantoms. So let's go and see how this is set up. I'm pressing one on my keyboard to go to my objects context, and we have a section here that is called phantoms. If you dive inside phantom buildings, you will see these are all our building geometries combined and phantom ground. Uh, you will see it's written here. We could have used the ground that came uh, with the buildings, but because it is situated at zero in height, we could also use a grid with um, uh, some simple grid that was transformed. Its scale was increased. Uh, the only thing we are doing here is we're adding a name attribute, a primitive name attribute called ground, and you will see why uh, it will be helpful to, uh, to us in LOPS. So let's dive into LOPS, press 2 on the viewport, and here is our LOP test 003. We have our buildings brought in. Let's view them. Oh, we don't have the camera yet. Let's just select the merge, view the merge, and then we can look through the camera. So we have our buildings and we have our ground. They are brought in in the same SOP, SOP import manner as uh, the helicopter earlier. Uh, after that, we created some materials. If you dive inside, this is a simple material X, and all it has is a gray color on it and then zero specular. And then we assign this material to our ground and the buildings, just so that they are not reflective and super bright. After that, let's adjust our lighting in the scene. While we are at it, we, we are here. You can see, actually, I um, already gave you a lighting that is matching, but how do you know? Uh, first, we need to switch from XPU to CPU. Let's switch to our Karma CPU. And after that, put the visibility flag on this render ground shadows. And you, what you will see is you have the buildings, but the ground is gone. But what you have is the contribution of the buildings. Uh, you have the shadows of the buildings on the ground. And we can achieve that by using background plate. All we need to do is to say, hey, which primitive do I want to receive the shadows? And in our case, we want the ground to receive the shadows. Yeah, so here is our background plate, and we want the ground to receive the shadows. As the plate in the background, I put our undistorted plates, the same thing that we put in the camera. And after that, in the render ground shadow, all we needed to do is go into image output and turn on this import render virus from second input. Without that, uh, this background plate is not going to work. But after doing so, what you have here is the shadow of the buildings on the ground. So now, if I go to my dome light, if I go to transforms, let me just remember it was 1, 1, 2. So if I put it on something like 50, um, not a good example, let's do 150 you can see my shadows are moving. And it's actually a very useful way of how you can match the lighting from set to your shot. Let's just go back to how it was. It was 112. Okay, so our lighting is already matching. It is not perfect because we don't have the perfect geometry of the building, but for the purposes of th uh, our shot, this is good enough. One thing I mentioned earlier is we created this name attribute on our ground, primitive name attribute, and I told you we will use it in LOPS later. If you look here at my uh, ground primitive, you can see inside there is a ground mesh. And this name ground is being picked up from the name attribute, because if I disable it, you can see it just by default gets called mesh underscore zero. In buildings, remember in all of them, we did create a name attribute, 01, 02, 03. So this gets added automatically. And for the ground, we are doing it manually here. 